Hello, and thank you for joining us for Inland Medical Center's Healthier You Facebook Live series, where today we're going to discuss how to take care for yourself and your loved ones this holiday season. Injury and illness can strike at any time, even during the most wonderful time of the year, the holiday season. Luckily, help is available. Inlo offers two prompt care clinics, one of which is open on Christmas and New Year's Day. And if the festive season brings emotional challenges, available is help for your mental well-being as well. Hello everyone, my name is Susie Lowry Hall and I'm Inlo's Community Outreach Coordinator. Today we're joined with Judy Klein, the Director of Inlo's Emergency Department, Prompt Care and Trauma Services. We're also joined with Patty Principe and she is an Occupational Therapist with Inlo's Behavior Health Program. Together, they're gonna to share with us on this important topic and tell us where to go to get care for the holidays, some coping mechanisms, and more. But before we get started, please remember that the information that we're about to share is not intended to be medical advice. If you have questions about your mental or physical well-being, please speak with your provider. But as always, please join this conversation. Put your comments and questions in the comments field, and we'll do our best to, join, to um, discuss them during the broadcast. And so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so Judy, let's start with you. Um, will you please tell us a little bit about the prompt care clinics? Sure. So Inlo actually has a two walk-in clinics or urgent care model clinics that are called prompt care. Um, one is located out on California Park. Um, we call it the EOC campus. And the other is located on Cohasset. Um, so our prompt care clinics are urgent care walk-in clinics that are staffed by physicians and nurse practitioners. Mm -hmm. um, we're open for typically 12 hours a day, and we can take care of all kinds of urgent matters that maybe cannot wait for you to get to your primary care doctor, but you don't need to go to the emergency department. Okay, so what kind of services do you offer? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. So common things that we see is, uh, you know, ear pain, sore throat, uh, maybe some difficulty with um, urinating, um, some minor cuts and burns, mm -hmm. uh, sprains, that sort of thing. Okay, so can you share with our viewers, and I know I'm curious as well, what is the benefit to going to prompt care instead of, let's say, the ER? Well, if any of you have visited our emergency room in recent months, you know that we have um, sometimes some long lines. So we're seeing about 200 to 250 patients per day in our ER. It's a very, very busy place. So we can typically see you much faster for a minor complaint at one of our prompt care locations than having to wait for the very emergent cases that must go first in the ER. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So my question I'm going to pose to both of you is, where, what are some common physical and mental ailments or conditions that someone um, that you guys often see during the holidays? Do you want to answer that one first? Kelly? Sure. Uh, stress and anxiety. People have such high expectations of themselves, and they really need to be aware that there is such a thing as uh, trauma anxiety. So anniversary trauma is something that will come up for people this time of year. They might have intrusive and sudden memories, thoughts, even dreams that are so vivid that they are actually reliving the trauma. And uh, that can be very common, especially people who have survived the fires up here. They can pretty much expect that. And some people have been suppressing those feelings, <clears throat> and uh, they, there might come a time when they won't be able to suppress them anymore, and they will just come bubbling up. That is really interesting, and that's very good for us to know. Anything you want to add to that? I think I, I agree with Patty that we see um, a lot of depression, um, a lot of um, other physical symptoms that are actually a result of um, undealt with uh, feelings and emotions around the holidays. So people do often visit the ER for um, you know, having just difficulty um, processing stress. Okay, thank you for that. So if someone gets injured during the holidays, how would they know if they should go to prompt care or the emergency room? 
So um, as I mentioned, prompt care is, you know, staffed by physicians and nurse practitioners and PAs, and um, we have x-ray capabilities. So we can see minor injuries, um, minor cuts um, that may need a few stitches, that sort of thing. But if it gets into something where, um, say, you were involved in a serious motor vehicle crash or you have a cut and you cannot control the bleeding within 10 minutes or uh, something like that, we definitely would prefer that you either call 911 or get yourself somehow to the emergency department. Okay. That is very helpful. So for those of us, Patty, I'll go ahead and switch over to who experience intense anxiety, um, what are the resources that are available for that? One of the resources available for Butte County is 211. You simply dial 211 on the phone and they are there is up-to-date information for health information and general information. Classes, uh, suicide prevention, everything. Uh, and someone will answer the phone, you tell them what you're looking for, and they will give you the information. That's the latest and greatest. All right, so Patty, let's talk a little bit about, about mental and emotional health. So during the holiday season, there is, you know, a little bit of during the hustle and bustle, there's the uh, what we'd consider the normal amount of stress. But how do we know or how would we recognize in ourselves or a loved one if it's more than that? Well, people have their coping me mechanisms. And if they get obsessive about them, for instance, perhaps they are obsessive cleaners if they're up for three or four hours a night cleaning and aren't sleeping, aren't eating, uh, that's a signal. Uh, people might uh, revert to their substance abuses like alcohol or their drug of choice and, and if they can't sleep, eat, uh, carry on their normal ADLs, which means their activities of daily living like going to work, getting out of bed, taking a shower, uh, taking care of their families, making uh, their social contacts. Those are all signs of severe stress, not normal. Okay, and going back to um, if somebody feels that they're they're responding or if a loved one notices that in another person, where, what, what would you recommend the next steps be they could take? I think the first thing to do is have an honest conversation with that family member or friend. Let them know that you genuinely care and you would like to help them get better. And uh, there are resources you can mention in low behavioral health. A person can come in for an assessment any time of day or night or call for information. Uh, when you come in for an assessment, if you don't meet the criteria or if you're uncomfortable with the way we describe the setting, we will give you resources that you can then take and uh, pursue something else. That's excellent. Thank you for that. So um, my next question for you guys is for people who are experiencing anxiety, um, what can they do to cope? Are there any relaxation techniques or anything that perhaps you could share? that we could practice at home maybe right now of course uh, the most important one is to breathe mm -hmm. so people when they become anxious and uh, stressed they take rapid shallow breaths and that triggers your sympathetic nervous system to send you into more of a fight flight or freeze mode we want to avoid that and tr and engage our parasympathetic nervous system to put us in rest and digest mode. So you really need to do your deep breathing into your belly. There are videos on YouTube you can watch and watch the technique, emulate that. But that's the best advice that I have. Also, there are so many things that you can do uh, to involve your senses, your sense of hearing. So some people uh, become triggered by say airplane vibrations or helicopter vibrations, it just takes them back to a trauma. And <clears throat> you can try to avoid being outside when those airplanes are flying over. You can put on some nice music. Uh, you can address your sense of smell, maybe with some nice lavender oil or uh, some kind of a scent that you enjoy. 
um, your visuals. Uh, you can read a book, you know, look at pictures. Um, so a person has to be careful and uh, avoid going overboard. For instance, if you're going to bake a batch of cookies, make one kind, not 12 kinds, and stay up for days and days obsessing about it. Uh, another thing people are uh, doing nowadays is they're downloading apps. For instance, the Calm app, app that uh, can give you uh, relaxing and meditative stories or music, relaxing music. I know one of my patients said that she puts her kids to sleep every night with the Calm app. She has a special song. Thank you. That's really helpful. So this has been really great insight. Thank you both for being here and sharing with us, um, the viewers here and I, um, all this great information. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we sign off for today? I would, yes. Sure. So I would like for people to try to anticipate their triggers. Uh, we hear stories, many stories from people about how they got into the store. It was so busy. They couldn't cope. They had to forget their shopping and leave. For some people, it's uh, maybe being stuck in traffic. It takes them right back to their escape from the mountain. Uh, if you can anticipate some of these triggers and maybe avoid them somehow by avoiding the heavy traffic time of the day or uh, taking a friend with you to someone who can help you you know, calm yourself and get your shopping done so you don't have to come back again and the next day. Uh, those are useful things. So everybody has a different trigger. It might be doomy and gloomy days. Uh, it might be seeing the sunset or the sunrise. Uh, all of those things can be triggers for people and it hits them just like a ton of bricks. It hits them in their body. They're having an emotional response but they feel it in their bodies. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you. It's, it's great to have the opportunity to share some of the services that are provided. We know that we have a lot of new members in our community who may not know all of the services that NLO provides, including our two prompt care locations as access points in addition to our own emergency department as well as our own NLO behavioral health clinic. So I hope that this information has helped um, clarify some things that you can use our prompt care clinics for um, over the holiday if you need us. Great, thank you. Patty? Sure. Um, I'd just like to close with uh, a request that everybody be kind to themselves and their neighbor. If uh, their neighbor or friend needs a few moments, please just concentrate on them. Let them talk it out. Give them a time limit. You know, I have 10 minutes, but then give them your undivided attention. Uh, let them see your empathetic uh, expressions. Hold their hand, look in their eyes, give them a hug, and then they, they honestly will feel better, and that's all you have to do. Thank you both for being here, and thank you for watching. Remember, if you need care this holiday season, the caregivers here at Prompt Care and Enlo's Behavior Health are here for you. We'll see you in 2020.